faithful. This is just to let you know there's more than one way that you can check in on the different types of degree of fuckery we get into. You can go to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Podbean, or just watch us on YouTube or Rumble. Don't forget to like, share, and comment where you can, or just leave five stars on Apple Podcasts. We, we, we thrive on things like absolution from our audience. But see if we can get this steamrolled into something big. We're depending on you. Thank you for watching. Now let us begin. Welcome, Angry Faithful. Today on Nerd Sports, we're going to talk about dodgeball. Most notably, Patches O'Hooley. I can Patches O'Houlihan. I love that movie. Bastard. Lived the life of gonorrhea, syphilis, and died. And crushed to death by a marquee at a second-rate casino. Yeah, it'll be messed up if you if you ended up doing something like that. Uh, but there's actually been some uh, messed up sports news. Uh, the most notably is the... Uh, God. I had it here, and it oh, blanked oh, oh, oh. out. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Uh, NFL quarterback Dwayne Haskins dies after being struck by a truck. Uh, this happened on April 9th, uh, last week. We didn't get a chance to, it was like the next day when uh, we actually got into it. So we're getting into it now. Yeah. Um, uh, he, he was a quarterback for the Pittsburgh Steelers. We'll, we'll get into this before we, you know, before we get into opening weekend of baseball yeah um but he died at 24 yeah 24 um uh let me see here i was trying to see i got it up right now uh trying to see if what there was out there about the uh like the the circumstances around it, you said it was he was hit by a truck. Oh, uh, Dwayne Haskins of twenty four, and this is coming from the NPR, uh, which I hate actually getting it from NPR. But anyways, uh, he was twenty four year old died after being hit by a dump truck while walking on a South Florida interstate. Haskins was walking on I. 595 uh, in Broad County for unknown reasons. Uh, Lieutenant India Manara of Florida Highway Patrol told the NPR in an email, Hasn't been hit by the truck as he was trying to cross the westbound lane. Moderna. God, I messed that name first time. Uh, I mean, he was pronounced good. dead uh, on scene. The fatal crash, which is an active track homicide investigation was reported at 6 37 a.m so he's probably out for a run yeah and the dump truck driver do they know if the duck dump truck uh, dump truck driver stopped if they drove off that's what i was that that's what i was trying to find <clears throat> um i'm looking right now watch some Uh, no, it's not showing anything of Malintent. Well, they're not going to, yeah, well, it's still too soon. They're not going to release any information about that because it's an ongoing investigation. So, yeah. But, uh, uh, since it's only happened like a week, I mean, usually on investigations like that, you don't get any kind of information. I mean, look at the, uh, that one transgender, uh, serial killer. Hmm. I mean, right. we got we got a lot of information, but we didn't get that much. Yeah. All right. So before I get into Major League Baseball's opening weekend, today was opening day for my son's Little League. Uh, uh, well, for his Little League. Um, man, I'm excited. They they won their game tonight, so they won their opener. Um, Colin went 0 for 1 uh, with a walk. Um, he's Struck out his first at bat, second at bat, he walked. The reason why I said he's 0-1, because, if you, you know, your first walk doesn't count towards your stats. 
it doesn't count towards your, you know, hit, you know, uh, it doesn't count basically. But the stat, uh, well, isn't the stat like put into the stats that he walked though? It shows a walk, but he only had two at bats tonight. Oh, okay. So he struck out his first at bat. <clears throat> he worked the count full on both on both at bats. So, I mean, he was making the pitcher work. Um, but he walked his second time up, uh, stole two bases, and scored a run. So, um, you know, he he contributed uh, to the to to the team uh, team score. So, but yeah, I'm I'm pretty happy with it. Um, because last year was a rough season. I mean, it was a brand new team. Uh, they didn't win any of their games last year. So, and you know, they were getting frustrated, but they got the same group of kids coming back this year. Uh, you know, it's a pretty good core. Uh, you know, they, they don't have a lot of that fundamental fall off like you would normally see at the beginning of a new little league season when you've got a bunch of new kids coming in. So, um, much like any kind of, uh, a team that's formed new and everything like that. Yeah. Well, basically any kind of youth sports, unless they've been playing together, you're, you're going to, you're going to see some ups and downs. Now it's not to say that they weren't without their defensive errors tonight, but you know, Nonetheless, um, and I'm just I'm over the moon excited. There was there, <laughs> it it's still it's still hard for me as a dad to sit there and not try to coach, you know. And it's like because I used to coach, so it's just it's really hard, you know. I'm just like, oh god, I have to just you know I have to knuckle down and 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 just be dad, you know. Um, but I mean, it's it, it was it was really it was really nice to finally see the kids, you know, kind of tie things together. Um, some really great plays at the plate. There was some uh, pretty decent pitching. Uh, I mean, there were a lot, a lot of walks, and but I mean, eh, you know, it. Uh, <laughs> this uh, one player was from the opposing team. They were on third, and they were leading off right, and they had a pretty pretty big lead it's almost like a suicidal lead off a of third our pitcher picked it up threw the ball over to third our third base or the runner goes home our, our third baseman guns a strike down the line our catcher catches it and tags the tags the runner out of the plate <laughs> so we were like mm, you know so we were going we were getting yeah you know, me and uh, me and another dad that was a uh, that was there tonight we were we were getting a little crazy about it but and, you know, it just, I love baseball regardless, you know, like I'm taking my boys to go see the Rangers uh, play the angels on Saturday, but you know, it's, it's still, I just, I love watching little league, you know, I mean, cause like, yeah, cause of the innocence of the whole thing. I mean, every, yeah, it is. it's, it's, it's at that point, it's about the purity of the game. Right. And I mean, when they're T balls, when, when, when they're playing T ball, there's like herding cats. It's, it's hilarious to watch, right? You get these little three, you know, or not three, but you get these like six-year-olds that are out there. I mean, they're picking their nose. They're looking clouds, you know, the ball gets put into play. Everybody on the, on the field, including the runner runs to the ball, you know, and it's just like, it's just, you're just out there trying to introduce them to this great game. Um, you know, but then you, you start getting into like coach pitch where you know, you start seeing, okay, who can actually hit, who can actually field, you know, I mean, who, who's going to be the ones that are going to hustle, who's going to be the ones that, you know, put in the work, because you can start seeing a little bit of an inkling, you know, right there, you know, at that age, and then you got to start getting into to kid pitch, which Colin's been playing kid pitch for a couple of years now, um, you know, so, I mean, he's got, he's got some decent power, I mean, the kids, I mean, when he can, if, if he can tie just a couple of little mechanical ends together, I mean, he's going to be scary at the plate. Um, I mean, he's got a monster, he's got a monster arm. I mean, he'll sit there and throw the ball in from the fence and hit the second baseman, you know? So, I mean, he, he can get the ball in there and I don't know. I'm just, I'm excited to see, you know, him stick with it and, 
you know, because I mean, it's 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 one of the bigger things that he and I connect on is just our love for the game of baseball. So, you know, but that being said, um, it, had, it it was opening weekend for Major League Baseball. Um, it, it was really nice to see people in the stands. It really was. I mean, with the exception of the Tampa Bay Rays. I mean, these people, <laughs> I mean, the Rays went to the World Series two years ago. Two years ago, they were in the World Series, right? And, I mean, they're like division champs. But you could almost hear a freaking mouse fart in there. That was just, there was just nobody in the stands for opening day. Aren't they based that? in Florida? Yeah. Yeah. Tampa. Yeah. That, yeah. That, that's really surprising. So you can't blame COVID for that one. Well, no, here's the thing. The Tampa Bay market is horrible. The only time that they pack the stands is if the team makes the playoffs because people there just don't care, at mm. least in that area. I mean, if they were to relocate the team to, I don't know, actual Tampa, you know, as opposed to playing in St. Pete, because where the where the trop, uh, where, where Tropicana Field is, it's just so hard to get to. It's just out of the way. You you got to drive out of your way to get to it. And it just, I mean, it's not that the Rays aren't putting a good product on the field. It's just ownership needs to knuckle, needs to buckle down and start making threats to the local area and be like, we need a new stadium. Yes, it can be done. But no, we don't want those catwalks up in there that come into play. Well, everybody, usually with the stadiums that like the that. Can, everybody that plays with the trop, almost unanimously across Major League Baseball, they're like, this place is a dump. Yeah. I mean, it really is. Well, most – whenever you're doing something like that, it's actually uh, the city that has to it, – it's weird because the owners don't actually make the field – it's yeah, I know. The city no, that makes the field. Yeah, I know. Arlington did the same thing with Globe Life Field. I mean, that big monstrosity. And and the Cowboys and, and AT and T, yeah. you know. But and then of course the people who live in the city of Arlington vote, voted to say yes. Please rape me anally for property taxes, so that way you. Oh can yeah! Go. Oh yeah! A lot of people were pissed off about that. You know, and it's like. It's like, oh my god, you know? Because a lot it, of people, a lot of people, like when they showed the uh, AT and T uh, facility, this is where uh, Jerry Jones uh, graped uh, Arlington. Yeah, he did. And then the Rangers are like, "Well, we want to be able to attract talent, you know, free, the high profile free agents to Texas to play, but." They can't play in the heat because that's a big complaint. Nobody wants to pitch in the middle of July. And it's like, I remember Nolan Ryan was saying, if you're going to play in Texas and you don't want to play and in, in, in you don't want to pitch in 100 degree weather, then don't play for Texas, you know? Yeah. And it's like, I get it, you know? But I just... <sighs> They could have done a better job with designing that ballpark. They were more concerned with cramming as many concession stands and amenities into that park as opposed to, let's just take a page out of Minute Maid Park's playbook and just make the field viewable from every corner, you know? And there's a lot of people that can't see it, you know? So, I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna get the. I'm gonna get a pretty cool opportunity this year to be able to go catch a game at both ballparks. I'm gonna go take. Um, I'm gonna take the boys to see Rangers versus the Angels uh, this weekend. Uh, I think in May the Red Sox are coming to town for a three game set uh, to play in Arlington. I'm gonna go try to catch a game down there, probably by myself, um, and then. In August, the Red Sox come to Houston. Well, of course, I'll be down there by then. So, and I'll have the boys, 
but that'll be the last week that I've got them for my summer visitation. So, um, you know, that's, that's what I'm looking at. We're going to go, we're going to go catch at least one Red Sox game at Minute Maid Park. So, but it, I, man, you know, just the fact that baseball's back, I mean, baseball's back, baseball's back, baseball is back. So, you know, we've seen, you're so happy about that. Dude, I'm telling you, man. Okay, so over the weekend, Major League Baseball registered 127 strikeouts across all the games that were played over the weekend, right? Mm -hmm. Tony Gwynn, arguably one of the best hitters to ever play the game, played for the San Diego Padres his entire career. He only struck out 127 times over his last eight seasons. I was looking for something. Sorry. Go ahead. But um yeah, uh, Red Sox went to the went to the Bronx to open up the season. Um Red Sox only managed to pull out or pull out one out of three, so and then they lost again today. They tra- they played Sunday night baseball last night, left New York, pull- got into to Detroit at about four in the morning and had to be at the ballpark at twelve. Actually, no, they had to be at the ballpark sooner than that because the game started at 1 o'clock today. So the Red Sox, pretty jet-lagged. I mean, they were pretty pretty wore the hell out. Um, um, and then Wichita Falls' his own Ryan Brazier gave up the two-run home run to Javier Baez to uh, put the Tigers on top. So, but the Tigers won today, beating the Red Sox one to three. But um, the Rangers had their home opener today, and they lost to the Rockies six to four. Um, the Athletics beat up on Tampa Bay thirteen to two today. Uh, the Cleveland Guardians beat the Kansas City. I, I, I can't, I can't, I can't say that with a straight face. The Cleveland Guardians. Um, Beat the Royals 10 to 7. Uh, Padres and Giants are just getting underway. They're about to get underway out on the uh, on the left coast. Uh, Miami Marlins are out there playing against the Angels. Um, and they're in the bottom of the first. Uh, Mariners are getting blanked by the Twins for nothing in the bottom of the sixth in Minnesota. Uh, the Washington Nationals beat the Braves, or they're beating the Braves 5-1. to one. They're in the top of the seventh right now. Uh, the Blue Jays are beating the Yankees 3 nothing in the bottom of the eighth. And the Mets are losing 4-5 to five against the Phillies, and that's in the top of the ninth in Philadelphia right now. So, um, man, I'm just I'm excited because, you know, we've got good, great quality baseball being played out there. Um, you're like a little kid in a candy store, really. Right. You know, now what we're looking at, we're seeing a lot of runs being scored, um, because pitchers really didn't get their complete stretch out from spring training. I mean, it was an abbreviated spring training. So starting pitchers, they've adopted this kind of mantra or this way of getting stretched out to, you know, increase their longevity, uh, during the course of a single game with a normal length month and a half month month and a half long spring training well because we only had a two-week spring training or three-week spring training i mean hitters are kind of on top of the pitchers right now and they're really kind of taking advantage of it but these are major league pitchers and they're going to figure it out they're going to make their adjustments and they're going to start getting stretched out they're going to start getting confident in their primary and secondary pitches and they're going to start painting corners and they're going to start challenging guys straight up with their fastball. Like, here it is, man. I'm going to throw you my four seam fastball. Come and get it. And you're going to start seeing the drop off the, the hitter, the hitting, uh, the batting averages are going to come down. The ERAs for the pitchers are going to come down. And that that's just going to be, you know, it's going to be indicative of the checks and balances that the game kind of has built in and by design. Um, so um, there's something of note here. Hold on. There is a, uh, a rook 
Kepke out of Cleveland. He has reached base 15 times in his first four games, and he's done it without swinging and missing. Like every pitch that he has swung at, he's made contact on. Kevin or Stephen Kwan, um, he he, he uh, his first, this is his first big league season, right? Mm-hmm. He gets a, he gets a, he records his first career triple, two more walks and a little more history, in a ten seven win over the Royals on uh, today. But with his six singles, two doubles, one triple, five walks since opening day, he has reached base 15 times in his first four Major League Baseball games. The most of any player has, or most any player has logged in his first four career games since at least 1901. And the fact that he's done it without swinging or missing. Yeah. So what did, what did uh, <laughs> Cleveland, what did they do? Okay. Well, he recorded his first career triple. So they talked to the Royals. They gave him third base from the game as a keepsake for his first triple. Oh, that's cool. Here's a, another interesting uh, news. Uh, Roki Asaki of uh, Japan. Threw a perfect game in seven innings? Yep. Mm-hmm. You want to know something even cooler than that? What's up? Catcher is only 18. Yeah, I was reading that too. He's he's like 18. He, uh, But they're like, Oh, he's going to be in the NBA, uh, the MLB, MLB pretty soon. And I was like, no, no. See, here's the thing. Perfect games are cool. There's only been like 20 something of them over major, you know, out of the entire history of Major League Baseball. Right. Yeah. But the pitcher who threw the perfect game, his next start usually doesn't do that well. Yeah. Uh and that's hey. like watching the offense put up 20 runs and then the next night they go out and they get shut out or they, they just swing and miss at a lot of stuff. Yeah. There were some nights, man, where like the ball looks like a beach ball and you can't miss. And then other times it's like trying to swing and hit a, you know, hit a paintball. Yeah. It's just, it's just the way that the game goes. Um, I do want to pay a little bit of attention to the NBA. Not right now, but we're going to pay a little bit of attention to it. I got stuff up. <laughs> I, got, I got a little bit of stuff. Too. No, 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 for the NBA. So You did homework for the show? A little bit. Wow. Only because I was just curious about the Lakers. Oh, see, I was going to give you a clap, not the clap, but, you know, one of these. But you said the Lakers, and then you just, oh, wait, thank you for reminding me. You know what? I'm going to get into NASCAR here in just a minute. Go ahead. And as long as you're not going to, you know, step on my toes. No, no, no. It's something totally different from the actual news news of that. Uh, right this is uh, Russell uh, Westbrook was uh, supposed to help a team just two years removed from uh, a champion uh, climb back uh, to the mountain. Instead, his struggles helped keep the Los Angeles Lakers out of the playoffs. The trade was among the worst in NBA history, but even with the season over, Westbrook still refused to accept the responsibility for his part in it. Basically, they're blaming the whole thing on this uh, Russell Westbrook and not on the actual culprit. Over to you. Okay. <clears throat> okay. And this is where I zone out. Go ahead. Sorry. So the Lakers have been officially eliminated from playoff contention. By the Phoenix Suns. Okay. Usually not a problem. However, we have the self proclaimed king of the NBA, LeBron the Flop James, 
playing for the Lakers. He took his talents to Los Angeles because, well, he wanted to wear the purple and gold. He wanted to win a lot. He wanted to win championships for the city of Los Angeles. He wanted to bring glory back to the Lakers as an organization. He wanted to be synonymous with names like Kobe Bryant, Shaquille O'Neal, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and Dr. J. You know, it's like, um, how about a whole lot of no? Why don't you just pump the brakes there, Fox and Friends? Because out of all of those greats that I named that have ever played for the Lakers, to include the owner, Magic Johnson, not once do I ever recall hearing, seeing, or even sniffing the snippet of an idea that any one of those guys got up and abandoned their team at the end of the, before the third quarter was even over because you couldn't stomach to watch it. Well, you know what? Guess what, LeBron? I guess that even it's a, Shaq played for yeah. the uh, Lakers. Yeah, he played for the Lakers when they, when he and Kobe were winning championships. Yeah. But, you know, I guess it's okay to sit there all high and mighty in your ivy, ivy tower whenever you're quote unquote hurt. Well, you know, we have men and women from all walks of life serving our country, playing other types of sports. They're getting concussions. They're tearing their bodies all to shit, and they get up right up off the, off the deck, and then they, they carry on with their day. You, you feign cramps because somebody's got it six degrees too warm in the fucking arena, and you have to be carried out by a procession of the, uh, the, the Kenyan uh, pallbearers. I mean, come on, man. That's retarded. It's 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 ridiculous. And yes, I said the word retarded. And if and if that offends you, well, then you know what? T- turn us off. But you know, if not, then hey, just stick with me because eventually I am going to make a very long-winded point here. But everybody wanted, you know, to to give LeBron this this coronation that he's the new goat that he's going to be better than michael jordan he's better than kobe bryant well how about you just suck a fat dick shut the hell up and sit down and just mind your p's and q's because well kobe bryant i'm not credibly sure about what his finals record was i'm pretty sure he never bailed on his team and then yeah you're sitting there putting up all these points and you're climbing the scoring record um you know scoring leader board uh, board or ladder Michael Jordan went six and zero in the finals. Never ever lost the finals, and he did it with one fucking team. He didn't build super teams around him. He made the people around him better. Yeah, okay. that, and that's what I think is the definition of a goat. Really, is yeah. I mean, like Tom Brady. Okay, the dude made people better around him. Okay, yeah. case in point, Wes Welker, he was a, a wide receiver for the New England Patriots. They went and won a Super Bowl together, right? Wes Welker, at, shortly after that season, via free agency, goes and signs a deal to go play with Peyton Manning in the Denver Broncos. Wes Welker's numbers dropped off the face of the earth, and I'm pretty sure he didn't last too much longer in the NFL after that. Because everybody's like, well, he was this great wide receiver in New England. What the hell happened? Well, as great as uh, Peyton Manning is, he's no Tom Brady. You know, uh, you get a lot of people like, I fucking hate Tom Brady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, okay, look. The, the, this is just my opinion. It's not a dick, so you don't take it so fucking hard, okay? You know, it's, <laughs> you know, it, but getting back to LeBron, but you, you're going to get up. And you're going to throw an absolute hissy fit. You're going to get up and you're going to walk out on your team. You know, you never saw Dirk Nowitzki do stuff like that. You never saw Kobe do that. Never saw Shaq do that. You never saw any of the greats, Bill Lambeer, Michael Jordan. You never saw Scottie Pippen get up and walk, even though Scottie Pippen's a salty ass old man who's just trying to stay relevant. A trash in Michael Jordan. Well, good luck with that there, guy. Everybody sees through your charade. Or even the uh, great cream, uh, cream uh, wow, you know, yeah. The yeah, yes, <clears throat> so, who is know, great in airplane. Oh, yeah, you drag your ass up and down a court, dragging Bill Lambeer with you for 59 minutes a night and see how you feel. <laughs> <laughs> but you tell your old man I said that, but um, 
got to you know, love that movie, too. I mean, the only time that I remember Dirk Nowitzki walking off of the court was just before they beat LeBron James in the Miami Heat to win their one title. And that was because the game was already already over. He had already been pulled on put put on the bench. He went back into the locker room with seconds to go to collect himself before coming back out and realizing that they had just climbed the mountain to reach the summit of the NBA. You know, people in Dallas, people all over Texas are losing their frigging collective minds because, oh my God, Mark Cuban actually put together a championship team. You know, but I've, I've, I've been, I've been of this mindset for a very long time. LeBron James, while he may have talent, that is irrefutable. He's a better shoe salesman than he is a damn basketball player and certainly a better shoe salesman than he is a role model. Yeah. I mean, I mean People like Steph Curry come in and they throw these like half court three pointers up and it's just basic it just makes the game boring because you get all these long range shooting kids that are like, Oh my god, I want to be like Steph Curry and then they're gonna out there and just like throwing rainbows up and you know, there's no there's no hard nosed basketball being played anymore. Nobody wants to go into the paint, nobody wants to drive the lane, nobody wants to sit there and try to, you know, work the ball to open up a guy on the perimeter. You know, nobody wants to go in and get underneath to try to score those hard fought goals. And nobody definitely wants to get in underneath to fight for those hard fought rebounds on both sides of the ball, both defensively and and offensively. But what LeBron James is doing is he is setting a tone of softness for the game. He is making it unwatchable. And he I really Magic is. Johnson, he is. That if I were Magic Johnson and the rest of the ownership group of the for the Los Angeles Lakers, I would cut my time, cut my losses, and I would terminate his fucking contract and tell him tell his ass to hit the road. Good luck finding somebody that want, that that'll put up with your bullshit to play. He's turning it into a tap, a tap. Toxic. I'm, I'm trying to make an acronym. This is the closest a uh, uh, toxic, annoying person. Or a toxic ass, toxic ass player. Yeah, or we could do that. Yeah, so he's a TAP, you know. And it's got nothing to do with, oh my God, you keep picking on him because he's black. You shut the fuck up. I mean, no, because he's a horrible human being. Horrible from what I'm gathering. Being. Oh my God, well, he just donates to schools in Ohio. That's great. That's all well and good. But honestly, if I was those schools, I'd be like, all right, just give me your money. Just don't, don't, don't just be a silent donator. Because honestly, at this point, we get more bad press being associated with you than anything else. You know, yeah. I mean, it's just it's complete and utter crap. And and when I when I saw that he got up and he walked out on his team. I'm going to take my bow and get him. Ski, you guys. And they're like, okay. That'd be really funny if he actually did take the ball and just start walking away. It wouldn't surprise me. I would just be like, oh, you know, the fact that the NBA head off or front office didn't find him for that crap and that the team didn't find him for that crap just shows how weak the league and how weak that ownership group really are. Yeah. Because they're, oh, we're going to, we, we can't upset the king. Well, it's not that. Someone actually explained it to me a little bit easier, and this is going from anybody that actually is a star of the uh, sports or uh, the star of that sport in that uh, area. What is basically they're catering to him only because he puts butts in seats. He doesn't even do that anymore. Nobody wants to go see this guy play. He builds these super teams of prima donnas. Look, very rarely will you see the Staples Center anything under 75% full. Why? Because the people in Los Angeles are the same of the same mentality as the knuckleheads of New York City. They don't care how great their team is doing or how bad their team is doing, they're gonna go to the game. 
Yeah. And they're going to support their team because they got nothing else going on in their lives. No, you know what? I'm going to retract that statement because that's not fair. They're, they're, they're going to go because they got nothing else better to do. You live in a city in an area the way, you know, that, that they, they, they you know that they do. But you, you're just going to go because why? You know, in L.A., there's an extra factor there. People go to the Lakers games to be seen. Yeah. Okay. You've got that celebrity star factor going on out in L.A. But as far as New York is concerned, I mean, that's a generational genetic defect. My, you know, my die. My great grandfather was a Yankees fan. I have my great grandfather was a Yankees fan. My grandfather was a Yankees fan. By God, my dad, myself, and every one of my kids are going to be Yankees fans. And God bless their heart if they come out there and they tell me that they're a Red Sox fan or maybe even worse, a Mets fan. I'll disown the little fucker. You know, what I mean, it just <laughs> have they? Have, I'm I'm wondering now if that actually happened. It's like, hey, you you like who? Oh, you you out of the wheel. No fucking way you're rooting for the Red Sox in my house, you know. <laughs> fucking move I know, out. I know, I know some you know, some people you know, you get those like really caustic, like New York, you know, Queens accents. They'd be like, get the fuck out of my house with that shit. <laughs> now I'm kind of wondering <laughs> if Bill crazy. Burr would ever do that to his daughter. Every fucking friends, you know. <laughs> I mean, there would be all kinds of like homophobic slurs being thrown out. It was just It'd probably be very tragic. Right now, I'm just hearing Bill Burr just screaming at his chin. What the fuck did you just say? What did no, you just seriously? Say? What the fuck did you just say? Go back. Go to back to what you said about the Red Sox. You're like, no, <laughs> it's wrong to beat your kids, but it doesn't mean you don't think about it. <laughs> I know. Do it because it's fucking it's illegal. No. But, you know, yeah, uh, you know, I saw something the other day, what that, uh, it was talking about transgenderism, and, you know, you got that, that, uh, that freaking knucklehead that, that, oh, I'm a woman now, I'm going to swim with the swimmers, and, and he's going to dominate. He's Which, we only touched a little bit on it, we just. He's been losing races lately. They, he only wanted to win one, just to. Hey, but then, he, then, and then then take your padded bra off and go back. I, did I did I send you that thing of uh, the the redneck uh, conservative yeah. or yeah. the redheaded conservative? Yeah, um, that was fucking hilarious. It related to LeBron James. They were like, the only way to LeBron James is going to be relevant and and reestablish some kind of like air of dominance if he changes his name to uh labrina and goes to play for the wnba <laughs> oh my god that's fucking great <laughs> i'm like ooh, yeah okay uh, is there any other news um uh, i think the nba season uh, they're having a play-in tournament um, Tuesday what? tonight, a play-in tournament for the playoffs. Um, Cleveland's going to play Brooklyn, and then the L.A. Clippers are supposed to be playing the Minnesota Timberwolves uh, tomorrow night. Um, it's they're, they're looking to see who's going to pick up the um, seven, uh, seven and eight seats. Yeah, so far the – the Jazz is going to go against the Mavericks. I'm only on the second part of the bracket. So, yeah. um, Moving on to NASCAR, um, it was a pretty exciting weekend at Martinsville. There was actually a fight during the Xfinity or after the Xfinity race. <laughs> really? It was the entitled 19-year-old grandson of coach, Hall of Fame NFL coach Joe Gibbs, who owns Joe Gibbs Racing. Um decided that he didn't like being bumped and put into a wall even though it's okay for him to do it just don't fucking touch my car you know kind of a thing um sam Mayer, who is an 18 year old driving for jr motorsports dale jr's xfinity team Mm -hmm. is getting out of his car ty gibbs goes over and pushes him okay so sam Mayer gets in his face 
Sam Mayer flips the visor lid. Now, bear in mind, Ty Gibbs has not taken his helmet off at all. He's standing there with his helmet on. First of all, that's a soft bitch ass move. Okay. Soft ass move. If you're going to get in somebody's grill, at least be man enough to have your face ready to take the same kind of pounding that you're hoping to dish out. Yeah. Don't sit there and hide behind your, your fucking driver's helmet. I mean, seriously. So, Sam or Air, use the helmet as a weapon. Yeah. So, Sam Air flips Ty Gibbs' uh, visor up, right? Then Ty Gibbs starts just freaking throwing punches. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, you know, of course, he's trying to spin it as, like, yeah, I lost my temper, blah, 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 you know, short track racing, you know, and I'm like, all right, nobody, I mean, he is making more enemies in the Xfinity series than he is making friends, and that is not going to make for a very, very fun career. I wonder if he got any kind of blowback from that. Um, Of course, NASCAR is like, oh, no, we're just letting the boys be boys, you know, but then again, they're not going to touch Joe Gibbs' grandkid. Now, if the coach was uh, half as decent of a grandparent as everybody tries to make him out to be, he'd be jerk a knot hole in that kid's ass. Yeah. They're like, you will not embarrass my team. You will not embarrass my family name. And you will damn sure not race for me if you continue. Quit bumping people. Quit expecting people to treat you fairly when you're not giving them the same, you know, the same, uh, you know, order. But uh, William Byron won the Cup Series race on Sunday or Saturday night. Uh, he was the first repeat winner of this season. So we're nine races in, eight winners. Um, William Byron's got two wins already this year. Um, I don't know. There was a lot of people that said that the Martinsville race was kind of boring. And that was just because of the type of car that the Cup Series is running in now. It's not necessarily set up for short track. Um, next week is supposed to be Bristol. It's a Saturday night race on the dirt in these new cars. But that'll be interesting on the uh, because well, they, they, ran, on, they, they ran a daytime dirt race at Bristol last year with last year's car. And yeah, I mean, it was okay. It was a gimmick. I'm just not excited about it because these cars are too heavy. These are 3,000 pound race cars. They are not designed to. Sit, they're not designed to run on dirt. They're just not. Well, not even the tires are meant to. I mean, I, I, I presume no, they, they, they change they, up they the run, tires too. They run dirt tires for that dirt race. Yeah, but these are not designed as dirt cars. Dirt cars have articulating rear ends. They're mm-hmm. they're they're skewed gear the t- tires are different i mean here's dirt. here's a question for that i mean these cars are rapidly interchangeable why can't they like if they're going on the dirt race and everything change up the the specs a little bit to do that with this particular generation these these cars are heavily heavily governed and i'm not talking about rev limiters or anything like that Teams have the ability to alter the seat, do whatever dash displays that they want, and put their engines in. But as far as like certain like A arms, trailing arms, stuff like that, there's a lot of pieces to this car that NASCAR watches with a fine tooth comb. Really? Yeah, that's, that would that would be and, you know, that's so strange. The draw of this car is the fact that it it allows some of the smaller teams to afford the same type of equipment that the bigger teams can afford. Okay, you know that's why you saw Trackhouse Racing for the first couple of weeks during the season really show some dominance, um, and they got their first win as an organization a uh, week before last over at the Circuit of Americas in, down down in Austin. And but they've been they've been running consistently towards the front since Daytona this year, mm-hmm. and it's because of this car. Um, you know they all source their parts for these cars from one place. You know they get, you know they get uh, they get hubs from this place. They get trailing arms from this place. They get a arms from this place. They get motor mounts from this place. 
they get rear axles, they get rear differentials, they get oil tanks, they get fuel cells, they get, you know, I mean, NASCAR tells them, this is where you're getting the pieces for these cars. And then the template for the cars, as far as like the body style, the fender flares, the grills, things of that nature, NASCAR has it locked down. They're like, look, we're going to figure out what this car is capable of doing before we even remotely release any kind of grip on what you can do to these cars. Mm -hmm. I I guarantee you that a lot of the bigger teams have already got engineers trying to figure out ways to tweak these cars without them being considered illegal. Yeah. If you live in that gray area, closer to the white side as opposed to the black side, you're living in that gray area to make these cars better without altering parts. Great. But NASCAR is not screwing around. Like Brett Keselowski, he drives the number six car for uh, Keselowski Roush Fenway Racing, right? Or Keselowski, or Roush Fenway Keselowski, so it's RFK Racing, right? They altered a part on their car that is a single source part from NASCAR. He got docked 100 driver points, 100 champion, or 10 championship points, 100 owner points, because he's part owner in that car that he drives now. Oh, wow. And his crew chief was suspended for four races. What did but he alter? A shop. I don't know. I don't know what part it was, but yeah. Wow. 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 I can understand that. Huh? Turn around. If, if like, usually they'll take like the top three or top five cars from a race and put them through tech inspection to make sure that nothing is amiss. And these technical engineers from this car tear these cars down, inspect the pieces, parts, and everything like that. And as long as the car passes post-race inspection, they put everything back together, hand it back to the team, and say, congratulations, you did it the right way. Hmm. Because NASCAR is dead serious about having continuity and parity amongst all of the teams. Well, that's understandable, especially for the small teams. Hands, put it back in the hands of the drivers and the pit crews to make good pit stops and, and, and that driver out there on that track knowing how that car can handle. Knowing what it can and cannot do and putting that car where it needs to be put. Yeah. I can understand that now. But um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to go see a race this year. Um, I'd like to, but you know, with everything coming up, uh, you know, my wedding's being moved up from yeah. July to June, first part of June. Um, I'm moving in the month of June, one way or the other. Yes. Yeah. So, um, and then, uh, yes, I mean, I, I'm fixing to, like, my backdrop, I mean, my walls are fixing to become bare. I'm fixing to start packing stuff up. I've got to go through things. I've got to minimize. Like, do I absolutely need this? How long has it been since I've used this? Do I even use this anymore? Where the hell did I get this? I'm breaking all my stuff down into these different categories. And if I don't need it, don't remember having it and don't use it. And what the hell is this for? My crap's going in the trash. Or yeah. if it, I can donate to like the American Legion post who's having their yard sale soon, then hey, great, fine, mazel tov, woo woo, you know, we go from there. But uh, yeah, I just, I, 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 I hate moving. It is the absolute worst. But I, I just, I need to, I need to go through my stuff and I, I need to figure out, I, I, I need to re embrace organization. Yeah, I think I I moved like three or four times in the past two years. Yeah, it's so obnoxious. It is, especially uh, all my stuff is scattered off into the into the wind on certain aspects. But other than yeah, that, material items that that still are in the possession of my ex, mm. uh, ex, you know. So I would love to get that stuff back, but. Am I going to get it back anytime soon? If at all, I don't know. I'm not hedging my bets. Um, I mean, we've gotten to the point now where we can have actual conversations and co-parent like normal human beings. So, 
you know, I'm, I'm just taking things with that as far, you know, as far as that is concerned, one step at a time. But, uh, you know, I, uh, I went down to Surfside uh, Beach this weekend. Oh, did it? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, rented a beach house. Um, stayed the night down there Friday night, Saturday night, and then Sunday drove back up here. Um, How was that? Dude. Beach houses are fun, bro. They really, really are. I've never, I, I, no, I've never been in any beach house. Of course, I never like stayed at a beach, so I never had that kind of. Uh... Well, when either, well, when we both get down there, because again, I'm being very optimistic. So, because I've gotten, I got an email from Dow. Uh, they had me answer some questions. I filled out the the questions. Uh, I'm, Printed up a Word document. Uh, well, I typed up a Word doc, Word document rather, and uh, uh, sent it back to the guy that I was talking to, or that that emailed me. And uh, he replied back to me, said, "Great, thanks for the prompt response. I'll get this to the hiring manager. So we'll see." Um, I'm still, I'm still. I, I am I am honestly like super stressed out right now because of all that, and, and I I really want to talk about this after the episode. So if yeah. we're actually done, well, we'll we'll talk about it off air. But um, you know, uh, next week coming up for local for high school high, Texas high school football is spring ball. Um, we're um, hoping we can get the guy that does the announcements and everything like that for. No, uh, all high. No, he doesn't do the announcements. He helps with the coaching and everything like that. He's, oh, okay. He he coached Pee Wee football. He's coached several Toy Bowl winning teams. He works with the uh, Wichita Falls High School. Um, I work with him. Um, I'll talk to him again this week. Uh, set up a uh, time uh, for us to get him on a Zoom, and we can go from there. Are you talking about uh because I mean if if there's anybody in this town that I trust more with spring football knowledge or football high school football knowledge here in the Wichita Falls area, it's gonna be this guy. So I mean he's been doing it for a long time. He's got kids that are, you know, he's got a kid that's going through it. He's coached numerous kids. Um are you, are got, you talking about uh our old boss or my old boss? Guess, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, um, you know, and I don't know, I, I, I don't know, it just, I figure we just maybe focus on football for a little bit, high school football for a little bit next week, just simply due to the fact that, I mean, it's basically religion in this state anyway, and I don't know enough about high school football and the way that that you know the the way that it works here, um, so you might as well get an authoritative voice on it. So yeah. you know, I'm going to talk to him. I already did mention it to him once uh, last week, and he he was like, "Yeah, yeah," I mean, he was all for it. So I'll just I'll touch base with him again, uh, see what time's best for him, and then you know, we can go from there. Because I know that he was at a camp, football camp, with his oldest son um, last weekend. Uh, so, I mean, we may get him to talk about that. I'm not sure. But he'll definitely be able to drop some knowledge on it for us. And, uh, you know, we can go in there and just kind of make, you know, just kind of hand over, hand, you know, not necessarily hand the show over to him. But, you know, just really kind of let him do him yeah for a long time so yeah i'm excited about that and oh thank god the blue jays the blue jays the toronto blue jays are, are projected to be very dangerous you got a lot of predict or people predicting that they're going to win the world series i'm not ready to you know to to coronate them yet i'm not i'm not willing to put a crown on their head and say oh, okay i'm just going to hand the trophy no, no, no. Um, but they did beat the Yankees tonight, three to nothing. So the, the, the Blue Jays are going to be dangerous. So 
Anyhow, um, I don't really have a whole lot. Um, I know that I've been kind of absent from the Zoom slash studio setting. <sighs> I've been incredibly busy. Yeah. Well, uh, I ended up having to do a uh, psychos and socio pass by myself, which that bitch was crazy. <laughs> I haven't had a chance to listen to the episode yet. Uh, and also, uh, I started doing, I did like one TikTok, just get it. I mean, I got like, oh my God, Angry Me has an actual like video with our own content on it. Yeah, it was, it was like, I mean, on TikTok, it was like 264 on uh, High Note, which is the TikTok uh, beta form that's coming out, uh, which I got a couple of blue check marks already following us uh, because of that, because they want that to be the new TikTok because it's 417 and plus. Oh, goody. So we're going to start seeing a lot of... uh... Oscar Fox, Fox trots on it. There's always Oscar Fox trots on. Uh, yeah. It's this is going to be more of a kind of a uncensored version of it. Well, there's also not to not Tumblr, well, a beginning of Tumblr stuff. Well, Tumblr doesn't do that anymore. Yeah, but when they first began. Oh yeah, that's all that it was. I mean, that's yeah. all that it was. Uh, but as of right now, uh, I mean, there's there's Oscar Fox Fox trots for uh, uh, TikTok, but they hide it hide it pretty well on some of them. There's even corn, corn's on there too. Not like you know full funnel and everything like that, but I've seen some that are just basically. Oh, porn. this is what we do. You mean porn as in P-O-R-N? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That oh, we have to say porn. like. Oh, okay. So the band. All right. All right. Fine. Whatever. All right. Okay. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, you have to. Okay. I'm just shake what my if... head down in that north south seeking direction to just pretend that I'm I'm tracking. Okay. Yeah, yeah. What they're doing right now, and this. And this is what uh, we'll talk about this a little bit more on like uh what the hell episode. Yeah. Uh I've got go ahead. I'm gonna get a hold of Colin for his joke of the week. Yeah. Uh but what they're doing now is what they used to do for like movies and everything, like in the fifties, they would have to like they take the phone off of the uh uh ringer. So not to be disturbed, and they're going to the other room it's implied stuff and everything like that so gotcha i gotcha which nowadays they actually can do but there's so much like uh coded messages and everything like that all right not to interrupt you hey colin what's up bud so i told everybody that you won your first game tonight the first game of the season well, well yes no it's not the first time you've won a game it's the first game of the season you won opening day yes okay so without further are you ready you got your joke all planned and everything like that yeah, uh, yeah. okay all right so without further ado i present to you this week's weekly installment of joke time with colin take it away bud hey limbo we walks into a bar he loses what so a limbo dancer walks into a bar and he loses <laughs> okay i get it now <laughs> yeah limbo were but it's yeah where it's a limbo dancer all right so you got another one for us maybe something that's uh, a little bit uh bro did you really just say that <laughs> yeah you Oh, don't play like that. I know you've got it. I know you've got those kinds of jokes. I don't got any right now. I'm tired. Okay. All right. Well, I'll cut you a break. I will see you on Thursday, bud. Okay. I love you. Love you. Later. Later. That was joke time with Colin. All right, everybody. Well, after that note, 
I'm David Dickman. I'm Johnny Skelton. And this is Nerd Sports. Episode number 52. 52. 52. Are you going to do the victory? I just did it. I didn't hear it. All right, we're going to have to work on some stuff. All right, people. Here you go. All right, people. I'll talk to you later.